questions? Yes, please. Is there any solution dual to n equal eight, Chairman Simons? Is there any solution dual to n equal eight, Chairman Simons? I I haven't seen that. And if I, well, I mean today. Later today, we will hear that that's a, that um, particular n equals six Saint Simons that you know for certain parameters that appears to have for for k equals one appears to have. And for solutions. Sorry. And for solutions with particular parameters, do you have? Oh, for me. Oh, for me. If I have an enhancement, no, I don't think so. No, I don't. I don't appear to have any enhancement unless I'm missing something. But no. more questions. Okay, if not, let's thank Alessandro again. Thank you. Our next speaker is Timo Weigand, and he'll be telling us about different instances in type 2A oriented folds. Yeah, thanks very much. And let me start by thanking the organizers for giving me the opportunity to speak here. It's actually a great honor for me. And I would also like to thank my collaborators over the past two years, Ralph Lubenhagen, a digitalist from Max Planck Institute in Munich, and from the PEN group, Mame Svetich and Robert Richter, who is a grad student at UPenn. I think most of us um, agree that the study of non perturbative effects is actually of some importance for our understanding of the landscape, in b both as far as um, the general vacuum structure and as far as the finer phenomenology of the landscape of four-dimensional string compactifications is concerned. The point is that despite their generic exponential suppression, such effects may give rise to the leading contributions to a certain interaction of a certain interaction type, um, at least if the corresponding interaction is forbidden in perturbation theory. As such, um, these um, uh, effects are relevant for the very definition of the vacuum, as um, is very familiar, of course, by now in the context of, say, KKLT-like stabilization of um, Keller moduli in type 2b. But as we already heard today, as I will detail much more in the second part of my talk, they can also give rise to some interesting phenomenological um, phenomenologically relevant couplings, which actually are per uh, uh, perturbatively forbidden. These include interesting applications such as dynamical supersymmetry, breaking, um, or um, a chance to generate some hierarchical couplings, such as Majorana masses for right neutrinos, particular Yukawa's, Mu terms, etc. In this talk, um, I will be interested in non-perturbative effects due to D-brain instantons, which are, of course, nothing other than Euclidean D-brains, which wrap a non-trivial cycle of the internal compactification manifold, but that's, which are space, uh, point like in space-time. And we will be doing so in the context of four-dimensional, n equal one supersymmetric compactifications of um, a Calabi-Yau manifold on a um, uh, uh, modded out by an orientifold action. For example, type 2A orientifolds with intersecting D6 brains, where the D brain instanton will be wrapping an internal three cycle, so it will be an E2 brain instanton, and um, generalizations thereof. At least for um, um, uh, reasons of classification, it is uh, useful to distinguish two basic types of such D brain instanton effects. Namely, if the instanton wraps a cycle which is also populated by a D brain, then it gives rise to a gauge instanton effect, which is associated with the gauge group of this D brain parallel to the instanton. In general, however, the instanton can wrap also a cycle which is not populated by any D brain. Um, in this case, it is sometimes called stringo exotic instanton. The point is, in particular, that it is not a gauge instanton viewed from the gauge group of um, our, uh, our space time filling, um, filling D brains. And this has important consequences um, in that its exponential suppression is not tied to. Um, or forgot or the um, gauge dynamics of the D-brain because we have um, additional freedom. I'll come to that in detail later. So clearly, um, the study of non-perturbative effects in string theory is almost as old as the idea of compactifications as such. Um, still, in the past two years, there has been some 
kind of revived interest in deep brain instanton effects, partly due to um, um, the observation, um, as I pointed out already, that stringy instantons can lead to interesting couplings also in the matter sector. On the other hand, it was also realized that the generation of F terms in uh, N equal 1 supersymmetric four-dimensional vacuum, which locally preserve N equal 2, such as type 2 orientifolds, that the generation of F terms in this context bears some subtleties which may not have been anticipated. And therefore, I'd like to divide my talk into two parts, the first being slightly more technical or um, formal, but for many people, of course, it will um, not be formal at all. Um, and I will be looking at the generation of F terms from BPS instantons and type 2 orientifolds. And in the second part, then, I would like to discuss some applications um, um, which were um, anticipated already this morning. And let me uh, finally point out that um, in the past, even in the past year after, after Strings 07, there has been um, a lot of work um, in this direction. And unfortunately, um, even though I tried originally, it's not possible um, to even mention all the relevant work. So um, my apologies if I, if I have to um, focus um, on, on particular aspects. Okay, so the central object of study in um, this whole instant business is, of course, the set of instanton zero modes, which arise from the massless excitations of open strings attached to the instanton. Um, this is because it is these zero modes that have to be integrated over, as we all know, uh, when performing the um, instanton path integral. Um, uh, um, corresponding to the origin of these open strings, these zero modes naturally fall into two classes. Um, in the first case, the open string um, is attached on the same instanton on either of its endpoints. This class gives rise, first of all, to the universal zero modes, which comprise four bosonic zero modes associated with the breakdown of Wackerly invariants in four dimensions due to the presence of the instanton. So these are Goldstone bosons, together with their fermionic partners. Now, for BPS instantons in type two orientifolds, on a generic cycle, so on a cycle which is not identical um, to the orientifold or which is not mapped to, each, uh, to itself. In this case, there are generically four Goldstino partners to these four bosonic zero modes, two left and two right-handed ones from the 4D perspective. The point is that, as, as was already anticipated, um, N, um, type 2 orientifolds locally preserve N equal 2 supersymmetry um, away from the orientifold, which splits up into the n equal one, which is preserved also globally by the presence of the uh, of the orientifold. This is the n equal one, which is singled out in 4D, and its orthogonal complement. Now, if an instanton is BPS, then it preserves an n equal one, but due to its localization in 4D, this n equal one is not e exactly the same as the one which is preserved by the orientifold to our brains, but it lies on diagonally like this. So, in other words, it breaks the orthogonal complement to this, and this gives rise to two left and two right chiral zero modes. But these anti-chiral zero modes here are not associated with um, the four-dimensional n equal one superspace. And this will be important in a second. In addition, of course, um, there are the usual reparameterization zero modes, which may or may not be present, deformation modes, Wilson line modes, um, dependent on the particular geometric type of the instanton. But this is uh, pretty much as in the deep brain sector. The second class of um, um, instanton zero modes comes from boundary changing open strings which one end, with one end on the instanton and another end somewhere else. So in type two orientifolds, if the cycle is not invariant, there will be the sector between the instanton and its orientifold image. And more generally, there can be um, um, zero modes between an instanton and another instanton in the, in the context of multi-instanton. And most importantly, there is also the, the so-called charge zero mode sector, sometimes called Gatner strings, because these appeared um, actually already in 96 in the context of F-theory um, uh, as analyzed by Gatner. Um, namely, these zero modes stretch between, in, between an instanton and a D6 brain. Now, if we have a gauge instanton, they can give rise to bosonic and fermionic modes, which, are basically the, which is basically the ADHM data. But for stringy instantons at intersections, we only have fermionic zero modes, chiral fermionic zero modes, and their integration will give rise to some of these interesting um, effects, um, which were already alluded to. So now let's come to the question, which instanton can actually give rise to superpotential corrections? In other words, in order to do so, um, its measure has to be of this type, and all additional zero modes have to be lifted somewhat. 
Well, the, the general lesson, which uh, uh, already was uh, used implicitly, is that um, we, uh, to generate an F term, we'd better take a BPS instanton because this is associated with the minimal number of Goldstein nodes. However, even in that case, as we saw, we generically, away from the oriented fold, have two too many zero modes, our Goldstein nodes here. So we somehow have to lift them if we want to produce um, a, a term in the four-dimensional action. And there are essentially four different ways to do that, at least um, as, as of now. A special case is the one of the gauge instanton. So if an instanton is parallel to a D-brain internally. As was um, discussed in detail in this paper and uh, applied to ADS instantons um, somewhere later, in this case, the Gold's denos, um, these anti-chiral Gold's denos, appear as the Lagrange multipliers, which enforce the bosonic ADHM constraints. Um, a special case um, is to consider a D-brain, uh, an instanton which is parallel to a single U1 brain, as was um, discussed in detail here and um, anticipated also slightly here. Um, even though we should probably not be thinking of it as a gauge instanton because there's no, um, no strong dynamics, the mechanism to lift these Tobar modes is actually identical. Um, so if an instanton is stringy, if, the, if it is not parallel to any D-brain, um, we have to get rid of these modes in a different way. The simplest op option is to put it on an invariant cycle in such a way that the orientifold action projects out the Tobar modes. And um, these are the, um, most of the examples uh, in the literature that work are exactly of this type. But it's, of course, an important question if also more generic cycles, which are not invariant, can contribute to the superpotential. One idea which one might invoke is to um, consider background flux in, um, in, in, in the ambient space. The reason why this might work is if, for example, we consider flux which um, locally preserves n equal 1 as opposed to uh, n equal 2, then um, the Goldstinos here, in our Tobars, would not have a right to appear in the first place, so they would be at best accidental. However, looking at um, the general coupling, for example, in the E3 brain context of um, three-form flux to the instanton, which was done in, in detail um, in, in, in earlier work, one realizes that, for example, 2,1 primitives are supersymmetric flux as such is not enough to lift, to, um, to lift these Tobar modes. But if one switches on even more structure, say uh, a, a, linear, uh, a linear gauge flux on the instanton, provided it, it, it exists, um, um, lifting is possible. Um, in fact, uh, recently there have, been, uh, have, have appeared uh, works on uh, stu studying similar effects from a conformal field theory point of view. For example, for D1 instantons, fractional D1 instantons, um, also the 0, 0,3 flux can, can, can lift these anti chiral modes. And finally, there is a fourth option, namely to lift these zero modes by interactions in the EE prime sector. And um, this I would like to discuss in somewhat more detail. However, before doing so, let me, um, um, uh, l l let me just um, ask the question, what happens if none of these um, uh, effects strike? So are all instantons um, which suffer from these poor girls, do you know, are they really useful or do they give rise to anything? Well, naively, one might uh, think that they uh, will give rise to D terms because they, um, um, they have precisely two left and right chiral zero modes. However, one has to recall that these extra girls, do are really associated with something which does not, uh, um, are really not associated with the n equal 1 in four dimensions. So we will still have an F term. However, it is a more general F term. It's not a superpotential, but it's a multifermion or higher derivative F term, which was first discussed in the context of heterotic and world sheet instantons by Beasley and Witten. More precisely, for example, from a conformal field theory um, analysis, uh, one sees that these extra Goldstone modes couple to hypermultiplets to um, give rise to um, higher derivative terms of this type. If, on the other hand, we really want the instanton to give rise to D terms, um, as was um, discussed in this recent paper, um, the, the instanton has, has, to, has to be non-BPS, so it has to deviate from the, from the correct, um, um, from the correct uh, uh, calibration condition. Okay, but let us now come back to our original question. What is the fate of instantons on a generic cycle, E not equally primed, on, a, um, uh, on, on an oriented fold? So um, um, this question was first addressed more, uh, more systematically in this paper. And following this analysis, let us consider type 2A oriented folds with a pair of an instanton wrapping a particular cycle and its oriented fold image which is supersymmetric and which intersects on top of the oriented fold in a cartoon of which is drawn here. Now, the first case to consider is that um, 
um, the intersection is vector-like. Now, in this case, um, at each intersection, bo both at the positive and at the negative intersection, there will be um, uh, a set of additional zero modes in the EE prime sector, which have not appeared so far. These are given by bosons and by anti-chiral fermions. The left chiral fermions actually projected out by the orientifold. Um, and of course, the orientation is correlated to the chirality um, of, the, um, of the intersection. The point is now that in the fermionic inter instanton um, action, there exist couplings generically between um, the, our extra gold's denos and these um, additional EE prime zero modes, which allow us to integrate out the gold's denos and also a particular combination, linear combination of our EE prime modes. So the two bars are taken care of. They, are, they turn out not, not to be that much a problem in the end. The question is now, um, what happens to the orthogonal com um, uh, combination of zero modes, which we are left with? If, if there is no way to lift them, then again, these zero modes will give rise to higher, to higher fermionic terms or to derivative terms of a slightly different type that I, than I showed, but anyway. More generically, however, one can think of mechanisms to, gener to, to, to lift these terms, for example, by fluxes, even though this, yeah, for example, by fluxes, um, by open string couplings, or as was pointed out um, in this paper, among many other things, quartic terms can, um, can, lift, ca can lift these terms as well, in which case um, a superpotential is generated. And um, so, so this, th this picture is actually interesting because, because it fits uh, with a more general analysis um, in the following manner. Recall that um, um, our, our, our anti-chiral Gold's denos actually arose from the fact that the instanton was, in, uh, was not invariant under the orientifold projection. In general, however, the distinction between invariant and not invariant cycles depends on the closed string moduli. The reason is that um, an instanton and its image in the upstairs geometry can recombine, it can form a bound state which, which would be invariant. And the recombination moduli, which are responsible for this process, are precisely the bosonic zero modes which we needed in order to lift our extra anti-chiral Goldstinos. This um, phenomenon is um, actually uh, represented in the usual D term um, into which these zero modes, which are after all charged under the U1 gauge group of our instanton, um, in, um, enters. So we have here the D term involving our recombination modes with the correct charge and a moduli dependent Fayette-Lopoulos term. So if this Fayette-Lopoulos term vanishes, so if we are at a supersymmetric intersection, then there exists a solution where M and N is zero, in which case the instanton and its image are two different cycles. And this is just the analysis which we just performed. In general, how, uh, now at, at different points in, the, in this moduli space, however, um, we obviously have to condense one of these two recombination moduli to form a particular bound state. So um, in, um, the, the, this, this instanton with this intersection structure was just a type of a cycle which can be invariant in the upstairs geometry for some moduli and can break up into a pair of, um, of, 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 uh, of two, different, two different cycles. And um, therefore, um, what, what happened at the locus where the phyetic locus term vanishes um, is a, uh, has to be in agreement with the um, uh, dynamics uh, in M plus and minus, depending here on the, on the sign of xi. Namely, if the instanton, this invariant instanton is rigid, it will give rise to a superpotential as before. If there are deformation modes, in other words, if these uh, additional modes which we, which we were talking about cannot be lifted, then there will be higher fermionic F terms. And as I said, this, is, um, uh, this fits into a, a, a general lesson, as was uh, stressed by uh, Garcia, Echibaria, and Uranga in this paper, namely that the lifting of zero modes um, um, on this locus has to has to guarantee continuity of F terms across lines of threshold corrections. So in, in other words, um, ensure holomorphicity of the superpotential. One may now argue that actually we were just looking at a special case, namely not really as, at a line of marginal stability where the, uh, where the spectrum of BPS um, state jumps, but just as a, at, a, at a line of threshold stability. After all, we had um, a BPS instanton on either side, um, so it might be, it, it might be um, yeah, one, one might wonder what, what happens um, if the instanton can really decay as a BPS, as a, as a BPS state. So um, this situation is modeled um, by an instanton and its image which intersects in a chiral manner on top of the orientifold. So now we only have half of the E, e prime modes, only these, which again enter the um, D term in the instanton effective action. 
And now we see immediately that, that while for zero or positive Fayette Heliopolis term, we still have a BPS system, for Xi equals zero, there is no BPS charge, uh, BPS state of this charge, at least not coming from, from these instantons. So if an, a superpotential were generated, um, this would be rather surprising. But in fact, um, it is precisely in this situation that miraculously, or maybe not, stringy consistency conditions um, due, to, due to global constraints kick in. Namely, um, uh, um, using or assuming tadpole cancellation in the, in the, in the full compactification, um, one can show using an index theorem that there have to be, as a consequence of this Kara intersection, additional charged zero modes, so zero modes between the instanton and other brains, whose charge is precisely proportional to this chiral intersection. That's why in the previous case we didn't need to take them into account because this um, was not a chiral intersection, but now if we have a chiral intersection, we do have these additional zero modes. And these actually do spoil the game. Namely, it turns out that there exist no couplings in the instanton effective action, at least perturbatively not, not, not perturbative from the instanton point of view, which can lift these zero modes. A anything um, that um, would be gauge invariant would have to involve here our and bar modes, these are the modes at the E prime sector, and I, sh I should not have drawn here these lambda. So these are two chiral modes, this is an anti chiral mode, and such couplings are always vanishing. So global constraints have, have, um, have um, enforced, again, this picture um, um, uh, th that, the instant, uh, th that, that the contribution from the instant on should not, should, should not jump. Um, one might now try and, and play a trick and, uh, on string theory and, and see if this, is, um, if, if this is really robust enough. For example, one can invoke a system where we have several instantons in addition, even though this might look slightly baroque, um, uh, and the intersection engineered in such a way that these extra zero modes just lift our modes lambda between the instanton and the deep brains. These modes here, they are now here. Indeed, this can happen. So the, the zero modes as such are not a problem here. But once we, once we achieve this lifting of fermionic zero modes, we have just added so much matter um, that the um, line of uh, marginal stability has turned into a line of threshold stability. Namely, we have also additional bosonic zero modes here. And as we see, again, now there exists a BPS state on either side of the line of marginal stability. Again, in, in agreement with, with, the, um, with more general arguments. So, um, to, to summarize, we have seen that the study of, um, of F terms or of superpotentials in type 2 orientifolds naturally requires the inclusion of two instanton systems on the covering space, simply because instantons which contribute can break up, and when they break up, they still have to do the job for us. Um, this can be um, extended to multi-instanton configurations, so where the second instanton is not, is not only the, um, the um, uh, orientifold image, but a, really a different, completely different instanton. And now it, also new zero modes, recombination modes, etc., cetera, um, appear, which can be lifted by similar mechanisms. There are also other types of higher, zero, uh, higher instantons, which were mentioned today, in which case um, um, the, the, the extra zero modes have to be lifted um, at the loop level with um, uh, potential interesting applications um, also to modulate stabilization. Okay, so this concludes the first part of my talk, the, um, the, uh, the, the more formal maybe or, or, or te technical issues. Let us now come to the question of applications. Why could this um, um, potentially be interesting? And in, in fact, it was the, the main point was mentioned today already in, in Luis's nice talk, namely um, in type 2 orientifolds, many couplings or some interesting couplings are actually forbidden due to global U1 selection rules. These are diagonal um, U1s of the unitary gauge group on the stack of D-brains, which become massive due to the Chern-Simon coupling of the D-brain to the Raman-Raman background. Um, as, a, 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 as a side effect, or as an important effect, this, um, this coupling um, leads to a, ch basically charges the axion which we get from dimensional reduction of the Raman forms on a cycle, provided the cycle intersects with our D-brain. In this situation, the instanton wrapping this cycle um, would not lead to gauge invariant um, um, suppression factor. So only superpotentials are allowed, which have a compensating um, operator product in front, where these are open string operators um, that are of the opposite charge and would otherwise be forbidden perturbatively. 
So the microscopic origin of these um, couplings is, of course, just the appearance of these extra charged zero modes, which give rise to um, disk level couplings in the instanton effective action and can be integrated out. So this has two far-reaching, or well, from my point of view, far-reaching consequences for string phenomenology, at least in this, um, in, in the type two business. Um, the one is for the nth time the generation of perturbatively forbidden open string couplings, um, and the generation of hierarchies associated with these. For, um, the prime example was um, on, on Majorana masses, with a lot of um, more detailed work, um, also in the past year. One, one might um, also generate the, uh, a, a suppressed Dirac neutrino mass directly. It was mentioned by Luis that possibly the weak scale mu term could be, um, could be um, generated in this way. And an important coupling, which was mentioned also today, um, is the appearance of these 10, 10, 5 couplings in, in, in SU5s. Actually, uh, le le let, me, le let me say something, something more about these. As we, as we saw, they are generically forbidden at the perturbative level. However, um, now non-perturbative effects can induce such a term, and the corresponding term will be suppressed by the instanton effective action. This is the volume over GS, the volume of the instanton. And the volume of this instanton is not identical with the volume of the gut brains. So this coupling is not um, um, automatically suppressed with, one, uh, with e to the 1 over alpha gut. It can, in principle, have any value smaller than 1. For example, if we want, um, uh, if we want an, uh, something of the order 10 to the minus 2, we would have to need a scaling of ratios of cycles 2 to 7, which is an order 1 scaling. I'll come to this um, m more at the end. So while we don't have a prediction uh, in general, it is, it is, um, it is um, not absurd to assume that these couplings give rise, uh, that these effects give rise to, um, to the couplings. On the other hand, in flipped SU5, these couplings give rise not to the up-type uh, up -type couplings, but to the down-type couplings, and there with um, e even more, re more, more relaxation on, um, on the volume ratio of our instant versus deep brains, um, one could engineer um, th this hierarchy of up to down-type um, sectors. Finally, um, I will um, discuss in more details um, applications to supersymmetry breaking action. And I'd also like to point out this nice paper, which um, used instantons to um, um, induce new, t new terms um, of, of, of supersymmetry mediation. Um, on a slightly different vein, the appearance of non-perturbative terms involving open string fields um, also has important effects on the moduli stabilization issue, namely if um, a, a particular instanton um, gives rise to, to, uh, to a term involving such an operator product which has to vanish for certain phenological reasons, because, for, for whatever reasons, then this instanton cannot be used in a KKLT type manner to, to, to fix the cycle. Um, it, it wraps. Rather, one has to invoke different uh, mechanisms. This was pointed out in this paper. For example, D-terms or uh, a non-trivial non Keller potential corrections. Um, and this is actually an important issue, uh, again, where global constraints come in because um, basically this happens whenever cycles intersect our standard model, um, even though nothing is wrapped on them. So even though, um, yeah, it, it's these global constraints which might spoil the day, uh, the day in the end. So, okay. So um, very briefly, um, uh, let me come to, um, um, to, to, to one potential application which we heard about today, namely, um, as was pointed out um, um, originally by these, paper, uh, by these people, um, instantons can naturally be used to generate Polony terms which can break supersymmetry, and also to account for the, um, for the exponential suppression of the Polony factor which is needed um, if we want TV um, uh, Su Susie from, from this effect. So the, um, the Polony field could be either an adjoint open modulus or, as we heard today, and this was um, used also before, it can um, appear as a charged field modulus. So it can appear at an intersection of a U1A and U1B brain, which has to be, um, which has to be anomalous. Independently of this, but still as a benefit, um, these models can, um, can communicate supersymmetry by uh, the mechanism of gauge mediation if they are coupled suitably to messengers under our gut group in which case we would have to stabilize the Polony field away from, from zero. There are various mechanisms in the literature, in the phenomenological literature also known to do this. For example, to invoke quartic corrections in the Keller potential, which may come from, uh, fr from different sectors. In any case, um, um, this chiral sector of, 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 of supersymmetry breaking can be realized in, in global models, as we demonstrated here, or also in local F-theory guts. It was discussed today and um, also in, in detail in, in these two papers. 
Um, uh, on a slightly different way, if, if we do have now also vector-like pairs um, bet between this U1, a vector-like pair, we, um, there are also in general non-renormalizable terms which have to be taken into account, which can compete with these scalar potential corrections and um, which, which can also give rise to um, a, a non-supersymmetric minimum, provided certain conditions on uh, the back reaction um, is taken into account. So in the, in, the, in the remaining two seconds, um, let me just um, ask the question if this mechanism or any of these mechanisms described can really be implemented into fully fledged string constructions. For example, as for um, a year ago at string 07, I think it was still an open question if all the stringent zero mode constraints can actually be realized um, in, 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 a, in, a, in a global complexification with one exception. Um, um, uh, we, we would like to uh, uh, address this, for example, in the context of type 1 compactifications with magnetized D9 brains and E1 instantons um, wrapping uh, isolated holomorphic curves. These automatically give rise to, or have the potential to give rise to, um, to, to a superpotential. These charge zero modes would now come from um, the restriction of our gauge bundles on the D9 brains and are uh, classified by certain cohomology groups. And in a global model, we have to make sure that there are no additional zero modes, which would spoil the day, um, in particular none from, from those brains, which have to be added in order to um, cancel the tadpole. So just as one example, one might now uh, envisage um, implementing uh, a quiver which would, could, could give rise to um, uh, supersymmetry breaking. Um, um, here, just for concreteness, I'm, I'm, I'm taking this, um, the, this quiver which has two U1s uh, um, with a vector-like um, uh, vector -like partner, which could also do without this, depending on which mechanism one wants to invoke. Um, one can couple this now t through um, um, messengers to, say, our gut sector or whatever visible sector we have, and now um, read off the zero-mode constraints in order to generate a Polony type of, of, uh, term of this type. Once all these zero modes um, are indeed satisfied, um, zero mode constraints are satisfied, the suppression scale of this instanton, as I said already, is basically given by the volume of the instanton over GS. And by eliminating GS, we can, we can see that we have two pi over alpha gut times the ratio of the volume to the gauge kinetic function of wherever our standard model is, is realized. In this case, it is for D9 brains, it happens to be basically the color Biao plus thresholds, but this is not, not so important. So it is really this geometric ratio which decides about the non-perturbative suppression of this factor. For example, if one uh, needs a term uh, for, for mu uh, 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 of the order of 10 to minus 10, or depending on the details of one's model, this would, for example, um, translate into rather mild tuning um, of this type. And in fact, as I, as I said, well, um, this effect, at least the zero mode constraints, can be, can be realized also in, in, in globally defined models. Um, for example, um, in these papers, we um, looked at certain um, uh, elliptic vibrations where one can identify a particular um, E1 instanton um, which has the right charge zero modes to contribute. So, um, um, yes, maybe I should basically just come to an end. And conclude. Um, so I think that it's fair to say that since um, strings 07, there has been a lot of activity in this um, in this field of D-brain instantons and type 2 orientifolds. Again, um, I'm sorry that I uh, couldn't really cover everything, but um, just from my personal perspective, um, I tried to discuss some technical aspects, in particular the um, generation of F terms from non-invariant cycles, from generic cycles and type 2 orientifolds. Um, and um, this has led also to some um, a deeper understanding or some, 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 some general understanding of the behavior of um, the superpotential across lines of marginal stability and or threshold stability. Um, explicit examples, um, the ones I showed you are of course rather trivial in the sense that they are just a local, um, a local setup which one cooks up. Of course it would be very nice to see um, um, how this picture can be realized or identified explicitly in, by, by summing up instantons. But this, I agree, is, is probably very hard because it, one needs a complete knowledge of, 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 of the um, variation of our BPS spectrum in uh, a long moduli space. Um, on the other hand, there have been um, um, some interesting phenomenological applications. Um, um, uh, th th these couplings can be, in, in principle, um, embedded into globally consistent models. And I think one, uh, one exciting new development is an application to supersymmetry breaking and its mediation. Um, thanks very much for your attention.
Thank you. We have time for a few questions. Yes. Yeah, just uh, have a comment about the um, the five ten ten couplings. I think that you can fine tune to you want to make it work, but the natural you want sits in U five, and the coupling of that you want on SU five are identified naturally. So.